everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and I'm here to talk about something that I get asked about a lot and is something that comes up a lot when somebody's trying to follow the GAPS diet and that is fat digestion. Dr. Natasha's books, which I highly, highly recommend. I mean, if you want to do well following the GAPS diet, you really have to read her books. I have another video, which I will link down below, where I compare her two books, her yellow one and her newer blue one, and I talk about which one you should start with depending on what kind of symptoms you're dealing with. But either way, I always recommend people eventually read both of her books. It's just so important. You really can't follow the GAPS diet if you haven't read her manual. So highly recommend it. There'll be links down below where you can grab her books. Anyway, you'll know when you read Dr. Natasha's books that she talks a lot about animal fat and the benefits of animal fat. She talks about how the more animal fat a person consumes, the quicker and deeper their healing is going to be. Animal fat is important for so many systems in the body, for brain health, for hormone health, for our skin and immune system and gut and just everything. It's so important. But something that oftentimes comes up when we start eating more animal fats is that we figure out or discover that our body is having kind of a hard time digesting them. It's a really big common thing to deal with because one reason is our culture, thankfully I think we're kind of moving out of this, but our culture here in the United States and I know in a lot of other areas too, people are very fat phobic. There's been a lot of misinformation about fats and it's made people afraid to eat plenty of fats and it's so sad because there are just so many different health conditions connected to not having enough fat that I have seen in my experience experience and that I've researched about and it just makes me sad. So our bodies get used to not having enough fat and then what happens is our liver is like, oh, there's not a whole lot of fat coming in. I don't need to produce very much bile. So then it gets used to not producing very much bile and so when you start ramping up your amounts of fat, your body kind of has to go, wait a second, what's going on? I'm not used to this. So let's talk about some tips for getting used to eating more fat and helping your body to be able to digest it easier. So the number one one tip that I have is to go slowly. So Dr. Natasha recommends at least a half of a cup of additional animal fat every day. I know some GAPS practitioners who recommend a cup a day or even a cup and a half depending on what the people are dealing with. I know that one really good advice that I heard from a GAPS practitioner is you want to break that fat glass ceiling if that makes sense. So that means if a cup of fat a day feels like unheard of to you and that's probably a really good goal. So don't start there, you know, with that goal in mind, gradually increasing your animal fats each day until you're at that point. And when you're having a cup a day, you're not going to be afraid of fat anymore. When you're doing well with it and you're having it every single day, that fat phobic thought process is not going to be there anymore. And you're going to realize how much better you feel and how much better everything is working. And then you've done it. And then once you've reached that large amount of fat, then you can just kind of listen to your body from there on out. Most likely you're going to continue to want to have a really good large amount similar to that, but you don't have to be like, okay, measuring all my tablespoons and making sure I'm getting that amount. Kind of listen to your body. The next tip is going to be as you're working on gradually increasing those fats and your body is adjusting, paying attention to something that our body has as a signal to let us know when it's like, okay, this is starting to get to be a little bit more fat than I'm comfortable with at this point, And that is nausea. So that just means that your liver is like, whoa, this is a little bit more. I need to be triggered to produce a little bit more bile than I have been previously. So if you feel that nausea as you're increasing your fats, that means stop where you are, maybe back down the amount just a little bit. Kind of stay at that level for a few days and then try increasing again. Chances are your body will be ready for a little bit more after it's had a, just a little bit of time to adjust at whatever amount that you're at. Another tip is to take some herbal digestive bitters. I really like the organic ones from a company called Urban Moonshine. I'll link those down below, but they're really great for boosting stomach acid at the beginning of a meal and they have herbs in there that are really helpful for supporting your liver. So we have a thing if we're like drinking some meat stock and there's a bunch of fat in that meat stock and we're like, whoa, this is making me feel just a little queasy while I'm trying to down this much fat, then we'll just take a little dropper full of our digestive bitters and then done, no more nausea. We can drink that fat down just fine, no problem. 
and the reason why that helps is because it just boosts your liver to be able to work a little bit better in producing that bile and then you're able to deal with those fats and digest them properly. Another thing that's really really helpful for helping your body transition to digesting more fat and having an easier time with it is to take ox bile supplements. So I'll link one that I like oh down God. below but Dr. Natasha recommends that to help with fight fat digestion as your body is adjusting. Just provide some of that bile that your body isn't quite to, able to make enough of yet while it gets used to producing more. Another topic that is closely related to fat digestion oh. is liver support and like I explained before the liver plays a key part in producing bile to release into the digestive tract to actually be able to digest fat. So when you have a liver that is struggling then you're not going to have that bile production like you need to be able to digest those fats and so liver support becomes really really important. It's pretty much important for anybody on GAPS. In my experience pretty much anybody who needs GAPS has a liver that needs some support and so let's talk a little bit about how we can do that. So one is drinking beet kvass. I have a video where I show you how to make beet kvass and I'll link that down below. That's a really great thing to do. You can drink four ounces on an empty stomach first thing in the morning and then middle of the afternoon. You definitely want to start gradually from like a teaspoon diluted in four ounces of water and gradually increase. You don't want to start with four ounces twice a day or you'll have probably a pretty bad die-off reaction. So start slowly, dilute a tiny bit in water and then gradually work up. Another thing that can be really helpful for liver support is Epsom salt baths. Skin brushing right before an Epsom salt bath, believe it or not, is helpful for the liver too. It's just helping your skin, which is another detox organ while it's working, which takes some of the burden off of your liver. Getting enough sleep is really important for good liver health. Castor oil packs can be very, very helpful. You can find some nice organic castor oil, massage that onto kind of your whole abdomen, but focusing where your liver is, and then put a cotton towel on top of that, and then an old-fashioned hot water bottle on top of that, and then let that sit on there while you go to sleep. You can leave it on there as long as it's comfortable, and that can really help decongest your liver. Dr. Natasha explains all of this in her blue book, Gut and Physiology Syndrome. Highly, highly <coughs> recommend getting this one. Like they talked about, full of so much information. It's a lot bigger than her yellow book. Amazing. There's a chapter called Bowel Management, and she talks about a lot of different things in there. So these are her suggestions and recommendations that I'm recommending also, but they're based on what she says in her books and teaching. The other thing that you can do for liver support is enemas, cleansing enemas, and then coffee enemas. Those are really, really helpful for the liver. So those are just some ideas to think about things that you can try for supporting your liver, which will help with that fat digestion. But the main thing to think about is just gradually increasing those fats and then doing those little supports that I mentioned to kind of help your body acclimate to digesting those fats more and more. Another question that comes up a lot is if somebody has had their gallbladder removed, can they still digest fat? And the answer is yes. Dr. Natasha says that your liver over time actually adjusts to create a way of storing the bile. So what the gallbladder does is it stores the bile that the liver produces before it needs to be put into the digestive tract. So if your gallbladder has been removed, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's sad, but the liver does over time compensate and creates a way of storing it just like the gallbladder used to. So taking that ox bile supplement can really help in this situation to make sure that you have enough bile to be able to digest those fats. And then finally, let's just talk about the different fats that are really good to focus on. There's a lot of them. You want to focus mostly on animal fat. There are a couple plant-based ones that are helpful too. Olive oil, avocado oil, keeping it cold pressed. She doesn't recommend heating it. And then coconut oil are all really good, but you want to make sure that you're focusing mostly on getting in those animal fats. So the really good ones to focus on are lard, tallow, duck fat, chicken fat, goose fat, tallow made from other animals than just beef. So like lamb tallow, bison tallow, deer tallow, like from, or elk, any kind of game tallow. And then I'm also going to include fish oils and cod liver oil in there as well. And then last but not least, of course, butter and ghee. So it's nice if you have little jars or containers of these different animal fats on your countertop. I have my butter dish here and my little container of lard, and then I have tallow in the 
the refrigerator and also some bigger chunks stored in the open air over in my pantry that you can't see. But I just have these little fats and if you just go throughout your day, add a spoonful into this bowl of soup, spoonful into that cup of meat stock, you know, whatever you're eating. I will even just have a slab of butter next to a leaner type of meat that I'm eating. Like if I'm eating a steak, for example, and I'm cutting up little bites of that and eating it, I'll eat butter with it. You can make garlic butter with herbs in it, which is really tasty to have with steak. I'll even, if I'm in a hurry, just do some plain butter because I know that my body handles that leaner type of meat so much better if I have a lot of fat with it. And then another thing that you can do is just have little cubes of cold cut up butter that you eat with berries or whatever kind of sweeter thing that you're eating. It helps with blood sugar regulation and all that kind of thing. And then if you haven't tried it, you know, don't knock it if you haven't tried it because eating little chunks of cold butter, if you're not used to it, might sound kind of odd, but when you're used to it and your body is like, yes, this is what I need. I can digest this just fine. There is no nausea. There is no off turning. You like the texture. You like the taste. You like it with what you're eating and your body is like, yes, this is good. So if you're not there yet, that's okay. You'll get there if you work towards it. I'm just here to tell you what it's like when you are there. It's great. It's worth working on. Your body is so much healthier and happier when you do have plenty of animal fats. And then another thing worth mentioning too that comes up a lot is, will eating all this animal fat make me fat? And the answer is a big fat no. <laughs> fat does not make you fat. Animal fat makes healthy hormones. It provides nutrients for your brain. So many things. It does not make you fat. Fat comes from processed refined carbohydrates and your body storing toxins, needing fat to store toxins. So don't worry about that. Most people, when they start eating the right amount of fat, they lose weight. The whole weight topic would be really good for a whole nother separate video. So if you're interested, I should probably go into that at some point too. But that's a little brief explanation of that question which oftentimes comes up. So I hope that you found this interesting and helpful. If you have any questions about anything, leave me a comment down below. Check out that description box for links for some of the things that I talked about that I recommend, as well as Dr. Natasha's books and my related videos to this. Also look for my free eBooks and other goodies that I have down there. I also have links to my 30 day meal plan and my program that I use to coach my clients through the GAPS diet. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else that you think would find it helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.